So anyways, I walked through here yesterday, but I didn't see this guy. And I don't know how. I mean, I do know how because he's green. He just blends right in. But uh, obviously, uh, here you go. Another case of a uh, convergent evolution. Uh, adapting to the low nitrogen conditions of this highly acidic, uh, leachy, sandy soil. Uh, here's a Saracenia flavor. Another carnivorous plant, the pitcher plant. And uh, this is a relatively small population. You got some over there. I believe our native California, Darlingtonia, is in the same family, but uh, of course grows mostly on serpentine and uh, deals with the, the low nitrogen of serpentine by adapting the carnivorous habit. But uh, that's of course 3,000 miles away from where I am. I'll show you some of those in a month or two when they're gone off. But uh, this bastard, does you got any meals in there? You got any? Sometimes I got some of these in my backyard and you could. Open up that little pitcher right there, the little flap. And, you know, I, I walk by it. I got You got to grow these in standing water. They need, you know, perpetually wet conditions. And I walk by the ones in my backyard. I hear some buzzing, and then I open the little flap, and there's like 20 flies in there. You know, because it's it's Oakland, so there's you know a bunch of shit flies around. We got a lot of the shit flies, you know. But this guy doesn't have anything. But still, look at it, beautiful. I mean, here's a plant that's beautiful even when not not in flower. Look at those red veins. Look at a red vasculature. And then, of course, when he flowers, you know, it, this peduncle comes up to, like, here. And it's this big red thing. It's hard to miss, you know. It's a little flag, the pollinators. What a what a marvelous plant. Well, look at this guy. Look at this. Calipogon pallidus. Another terrestrial orchid. With all those hairs at the top. All those hairs that almost look like stamens. And then, of course, you get down there. You can just barely see the, the base of leaves. Looks like a blade of grass. Completely uh, inconspicuous. Just a beautiful little orchid. Huh? How about that? Ooh, the, the fly-ridden uh, fern in piney woods. Look at these iris, though. This is an uh, iris tridentata. There's uh, the plant, and then here's the flower, of course. They, to be honest, I never really cared much for irises because we don't have much diversity. They get a lot of diversity, you know, at least in California. Uh, probably same for North Carolina, but you go to South Africa, Africa, they got a lot of diversity there. Uh, a lot of the good geophytes are, uh, are, uh, in the iris family, but regardless, there's something notable about the flowers. Okay. Being a monocot, it's got, of course, six tepals. It's fucking getting by flies. Jesus Christ. They got, you know, six that petals and sepals, tepals, whatever the fuck you call them, depending on the flower. Um, uh, uh, you know, obviously call them tepals if they're indistinguishable, but, uh, you look at these and these have, uh, what's called petaloid style so the you got three uh, sepals uh, okay and those are the big noticeable ones and then you get up close to it and you got a, a tiny petal in there a tiny petal that's uh, very inconspicuous you can see it right there and it's that's odd uh it's a diagnostic factor for this species see how tiny that thing is it's, that's one of the petals, and then these are the sepals. And normally, it's the the reverse. The petals are bigger, you know, and then the sepals are small. But then you get up here to the sexy parts, okay? And you got what's called a petaloid style, okay? Which means that this is a style. It's a female part. You lift it up. Right there uh, is uh, is the stamen. Okay, I, I had to take a break here real quick and see what's going on. Pull down this, pull down the sexy part. See that thing sticking up? That little yellow rod. That's the stamen. Okay, and it looks like you got fused anthers, fused longitudinal anthers. That just means those two, those two yellow things on either side of that rad are the anthers. They're fused at the top. Okay, remember monocots? Uh, normally, their parts occur in a, in multiples of three. You don't know what a monocot is? You got to look that one up. I can't explain it here. I'm already going over time. Okay, and then you got the the actual style of female part, which is hard to see, is up there, uh, where that that horizontal white uh, white part is, and that's where the pollen goes. So they got a very very interesting flower structure. It's very irregular, and you don't you don't normally see too many uh, too many flowers like that. But mostly, just look at that uh, the male part right there. That's that the stamen with the the yellow anthers. And then, of course, is hidden by that uh, that uh, lower part of the the lower lip of the. Well, I guess it's just the sepal. Oh, hey there, guy. How's it going? You just enjoying your nice time in the piney woods, huh? Do you know about calcifiles? Do you know about a, a rare carex? Huh? You like terrestrial orchids? What do you think about that? Am I being heavily obnoxious to you right now? Do you know about the, the pollination mechanisms of uh, Iridaceae? 
Why are you looking at me like that? You want me to go away? Okay, I copy it. Now, come here. Hold on. Listen, can you tell me what it's like to be an eastern box turtle? Can you tell me about the struggles you face? Is it a nice time? What do you do for relaxation? Huh? Please. Ah, come here. Hey, have you ever tried psychedelics? Come here. Please. Oh, you got a beautiful nose over there. Look, you got a beautiful nose. Oh, look at that. I had no idea there were bears in the piney woods of North Carolina, but I guess it makes sense. How about that? Oh, look, it's the piney woods. And it's Saracenia purpurea. Probably one of the most widespread ones. I think I've seen this one in Illinois. Who knows how many species of uh, Saracenia there are out here. Three, four? But look at those flowers, too. Look at those beautiful flowers. Looks like these are almost uh, done. Yeah, they're, they, the fruit is maturing in there. So these have been pollinated already. Look at that beautiful color. Look at those, look at those trichomes. Look at those hairs. And, the, and that flap right there and that lip. They're just saying, stay in there. Don't come out, stay in there. Why don't you just stay in there? You know? Stay in there so I can digest you and uh, use the nitrogen that's in your uh, body tissue to feed myself. Isn't that nice? That's so nice. You could go see this. So go see this by Volo Bag if you're in the Chicago area. But it's it's pretty widespread wherever the conditions are right. The highly acidic, nitrogen lacking soils. Wild flowers too. I don't know what you call this thing. I don't even know what that is. What do you call it? There's a little fruit in there. Okay, I, I misspoke earlier. I, I, I said that the order of these was in Karyophyllale, same order as cactus and beets. It's not. I was full of shit. I skipped my mind. This is in the same order. This this Drosera, family Droseraceae, is in the same uh, same order as cacti and beets. This is in Saraceniaceae, and that's the same order as uh, blueberries, the Ericales. Okay, so forgive my misspeaking. Talk them, you know, out my ass. It's probably the lack of breakfast and the 500 milligrams of caffeine I've had today. But uh, yeah, this guy. So this is a this is a Drosera species, much longer uh, petioles. Those are the little the little posts that hold the leaf blades, basically. What species was this again? This Drosera? Intermediate. Intermediate. God damn it! Look at it. This is a little bit bigger than this one over here, which is Drosera capillaris. But anyway, the point being, you got this carnivorous plant and this carnivorous plant, completely unrelated, different families, different orders, but both responding to the same environmental conditions, and you call that convergent evolution, you dick. If you take one thing away from this video, take that thing away. Convergent evolution, same thing with cacti and euphorbs, okay? So they don't share a common ancestor uh, that imbibed them with this trait. They both just uh, evolved it differently in response to the same conditions of this uh, this very, very acidic, leached and weathered soil. So being heavily acidic soil, of course, one of the families that thrives on that is uh, the Ericaceae. And this is Lyonia lucida, a member of the Ericaceae, a.k.a. the blueberry family. Get up there, look at those. Look at those nice flowers. And you got over here, not a nice one. Asteraceae, beautiful Coriopsis falcata. See the colliculi, those bracts, those little spikes at the base of the flower? Or the, the capitula, I'm sorry. It's a capitula with about 25 individual little flowers in there. Individual florets, you call them on Asteraceae. Look at those, look at how prominent those veins on those uh, ligules are, AKA the daisy rays. You got three lobes with prominent, uh, I guess they're veins. I don't know what the hell else you call them, the striations. And I didn't even see this bastard, Lyonia ligustrina. You could tell it's an aracoid. Look at those urn-shaped flowers, little blueberry flowers. Ericaceae, typical aracoid flowers. How about that? Oh, look at this, Spiranthes vernalis, another orchid, another terrestrial orchid. And look at that, there's a guy on there. He's hanging out, waiting for dinner. Kind of devious, is it not? Kind of cute, though, too. Look at those little basil leaves. 
Just blends in, just blends in with a grace. Get up in there, look at that. Isn't that nice, it's pretty nice. Look at that, speaking of, speaking of ericoids that love the, the acidic soil, here's a nice roadie. Oh yeah, look at that, rhododendron. Don't know what species, but it uh, looks like it's just about past its prime. It smells intoxicating though, as many of them do. Beautiful azalea, look at that. Holy shit, then you got your nice magnolia, uh, virginiana, Virgin whatever the fuck it is, virginia something. Smells absolutely delightful as well. Oh shit, sorry dragonfly. Can you get that, what is he doing? He's just, okay anyway. Very voluminous uh, abaxial surfaces too, real soft, you know. You could wipe your ass with it if you wanted to, but uh, you shouldn't. You should use, you know, some sort of uh, newspaper for that instead. You know, possibly USA Today. They're not very well. They're not oh, not a real nice uh, Ericaceae, another Ericoid Zenobia pulverulenta. Look at this. Look at that smooth bark too. It that smooth Ericoid bark, just like the uh, Madrones and Manzanitas. Ooh, Zenobia. Sounds like some cool kind of stripper name or something, doesn't it? You know? Or like a drag queen. Even better, a drag queen. I've known a couple drag queens known Zenobia. They used to dance at Aunt Charlie's on Turk Street. So you got Zenobia. Then you got the, a bunch of a bunch of Saracenias going on. You got Saracenia purpurescence, of course, which has that more basal rosette. Okay, see down there. There it is. Then you got Saracenia flavor. Okay, which actually sticks up and isn't flowering yet. Don't you love the piney woods? It's so piney. Oh, look at it. There's a real nice Saracenia flavor. Look at this guy. Just thriving. And I, I want to stress again how important, uh, how, the, the importance of fire, how important uh, the land clearing effect uh, of fire is the things that grow in this habitat because it's you know they get summer rain they get the heat it's almost subtropical things would grow very fast and uh, especially the pines and they would shade everything out so uh fire has played a very important role in uh, managing this ecosystem now of course this is a log area logging is another form of land clearance but it doesn't really it clears the land but it also compacts the soil brings in invasive weeds and is very destructive uh, you know, but this is, I mean, it's managed logging, so it's, you got kind of like some nice biodiversity going on with the logging too, but the, the fire is really what the, what clears this area and makes, makes it so these bastards can thrive. Otherwise they'd just be overgrown. You know, especially you get some of those drosseras and the Venus fly traps and, uh, et cetera. They, they really need the effect of fire. Here's that other, like a podiella again. Very ancient lineage of plants. One of the first to evolve that's still alive today. Well, not a nice terrestrial orchid. Here's Pagonia Ophioglossoides. Oh, fucking this will just stab me. Where are the basil leaves? I don't even see the basil. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there you go. You can see why they call it the... Oh, oh wait, you know what? Is it? Oh, yeah, that is. You can see why they call it the Ophioglossum. Ophioglossoides. Ophioglossum is a type of tongue fern, it's called. And these uh, these leaves certainly look like that. What a beaut. Look at that labellum. That lower, uh, that lower people, okay, as in most orchids, is a very specialized, it's spe it differs from the other five peoples in being very specialized. And orchids use these in a myriad, uh, the, you know, a myriad diversity of ways. It's very uh, different functions many of them serve, but that's mainly, that's the main pollen attractant, or pollinator attractant. And a lot of these orchids. And it's, again, that's called a labellum. And this is a Pagonia ophioglossoides. Anytime you see oides in a plant name, it means looks like. Is in this looks like ophioglossum, the tongue fern. Okay, here we go. Another wonderful example of convergent evolution. The third carnivorous family, and probably the fifth or sixth carnivorous plant we've seen today. This is Pinguicula cerulea. And the family is Lentibulariaceae. And it's in the Lamialis order. Now these are weird, and I've only seen this genus in Mexico before. Mostly in Oaxaca, but uh, they are uh, on both east and west coast. There's even a species in California. And you can see 
Uh, ping, pinguicula pings like uh, shade. They tend to like shade. They don't like that full sun exposure like you do with the drosters or the saracenias. Look at that beautiful flower right there. Look at that. So the, the pings like shade, and uh, what the you know their method obviously is they attract insects, uh, which then land on those those beautiful uh, leaves with the recurved margins, the inward curving margins, and the bugs get stuck there, and then they. Uh, you know they become basically a little italian sausage for the uh for the the fucking the plant right there so they just got a basil rosette and then this spike that comes up with uh, these beautiful purple flowers a lot of pink waculas have purple and pink flowers on them real real fascinating little genus and again not at all related to venus fly traps or sundews or fucking uh, what was the other guy we seen saracenias just completely did this on its own convergent evolution that it's not homologous, it's not the carnivory is not a homologous trait, as in meaning it's not derived from a shared common ancestor with the other two, uh, two or three genera of carnivorous plants we've seen. It's just a this similar response to a similar environmental condition, that being basically leached sandy soil that's very acidic and contains almost no nitrogen. You can't get much of a taste for what the bedrock is like here, but in this pile of rocks, which is of course put here by people to hold this gate here, uh, this is this is the bedrock that's uh, local to this area. It's called Coquina limestone. And if you get up close, you can see it's just rife with fossils. Uh, it probably, I don't know, I have no idea on age of this. What's the age of this? Like Eocene, 50, 60 million years? I think it's... Uh, at all this Lake Cretaceous, I don't think it's I don't think it's Jurassic. Lake Cretaceous would of course be just before that big comet struck the Yucatan uh, prior to 66 million years ago. Uh, I don't think this is like the Mo the Mojave limestone we get that's about 400 million years old, but it is pretty fascinating to see. I mean, you could see all kinds of cool brachiopod, the shells of brachiopods in there, all kinds of nice little, maybe a coral. A lot of stuff going on. I'm sure the microfossils here, the phytoplankton, the microfossils are uh, are just abundant as hell. Real nice. Coquina limestone. Underneath the big morella, a myrtle. The local morella, which used to be in the genus Mirica. Yeah, look at this. Pretty fascinating. Those are the fruiting parts, the sporophylls, you call them, of this Lycopodiella. Again, a very primitive plant. You know, first the, the whole lineage first arose in about the, maybe the Devonian, something like that, Ordovician, Devonian, eh, maybe, it was, they, nah, maybe not. They were one of the first plants, maybe Carboniferous, they were one of the first plants, the point is, to uh, to evolve on land that's still alive today. The lycopods, and many of them used to get upwards of 80 feet tall, almost entirely now, uh, they're all reduced to very small, diminutive uh, little bastards like this, but... Uh, you can see there's the actual uh, the plant itself uh, prostrate on the ground. And then, of course, you got the sporophyll, which then releases the spores. Also got a nice little uh, drosera right there, too. Looks like capillaris.